I'm Naisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Welcome to the Grassroots Business Journal, where talking small business links with social media. I'm your host, Paul Willis, and today our guest is Congressman John Larson from the 1st Congressional District, which includes Hartford, Manchester, and Bristol. Welcome to the show, Congressman. Paul, pleasure to be with you. Very good. Um, to say that 2013 has been an interesting political year is uh, an understatement. Um, and I guess, what do you see in, uh, for like small business concerns and everyone else's, how is the governing process going to continue from here? Well, I think whether you're in small business, whether you're in big business, whether you're a rank and file citizen, you've got to be as frustrated as I am uh, because the government should be working on behalf of the people and, it, right. and its businesses. And to see uh, the um, ideological gridlock uh, in Washington, D.C., to witness a few people willing to shut down the government and willing to default on the nation's full faith and credit for mm -hmm. ideological reasons runs counterintuitive to anything any American believes, whether you agree or disagree with the Affordable Care Act, uh, wherever you stand on a specific issue, you have your differences, but you work them out. You don't take the country and the people in the country hostage mm -hmm. and then default, uh, threaten to default on the payment of uh, American debt. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been a thoroughly uh, frustrating time, et cetera, but I'm uh, optimistic in okay. that the um, Republican leadership has said, look, they're not gonna go down this path again. They're not gonna, okay. you know, they went down this path in the, in the fall. They've, this is the second time we've been down this road mm -hmm. where, uh, but we're still operating under a continuing resolution and uh, not a full budget. The budget committees are meeting as we speak, Paul, okay. and uh, hopefully they'll be able to iron out the differences, come to compromise, which is what the American people want to see, mm -hmm. and then keep the, co the country open and working. And oh, by the way, how about helping out with respect to jobs, which whether you're in big business, small business, or you're an individual, uh, you know, the most important thing that Congress can do is to create jobs. And okay. by that, I mean investing in the American people, investing in our infrastructure, whether it's roads, bridges, sewage systems, broadband for our schools, airports, uh, railroads. These are all things over which commerce flows and travels, and including the internet. So that's why the broadband and the okay. educational opportunities need to be there as well. These are the things that we should be doing. Where do you see the partnership between the federal government and state and local uh, facilities and, and municipalities working in getting these job creations going on here? What, what, what's the partnership? Well, I think the partnership is the infrastructure, is the, you know, every, every state has highways, every state has uh, bridges, every state has sewage systems, every state has educational systems, airports, railroad, bus stations. So how commerce travels, and whether it be via the road, whether it be via the air, whether it be via the sea with deep ports, or whether it be across broadband, uh, we need to make sure that we're keeping pace in a global economy. The hard truth is we're not. We have reports where our bridges are crumbling, crumbling mm -hmm. are, are in need of repair. When in this area alone, you know, a, a major situation that we've been hampering on for the last two years is the the very levy system between Hartford and East Hartford, you know, that is in need of repair. And it could, if with the right pressure, uh, according to the MDC and several private supports, could create a flooding situation, a seepage situation, not different from mm. what happened in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, mm -hmm. you know, these all give you pause, but it also should give us the unifying factor. We say, hey, listen, can't we come together right. around infrastructure? And, you know, of course, you know, when you're in the infrastructure and you're putting the trade industry back to work mm -hmm. and everything that's associated with that, uh, you know, because you're talking about construction industry in general, uh, that 
you know, that it brings us a three to one value added. It's just like investing in manufacturing. Uh, we have contracts that have already been won by people like United Technologies and General uh, Electric Boat. Mm -hmm. uh, and these, uh, these contracts that are there are being prevented because of the government shutdown and the sequester in Washington from mm -hmm. the money pouring into the states, which creates jobs not only at those very large plants, mm -hmm. but also to the entire supply network, all the tool and dye and machine shops that's right. that's all right. across the state, which that's the backbone of the Connecticut economy. And here again, for every single one of those manufacturing jobs is the equivalent of four service sector jobs. Wow. So we have a lot of area that, you know, frankly, we should be focusing on. And the whole world is looking in at Washington, D.C., and here's this nonsense about shutting down the government mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or not willing, not you know, not paying our debts. That's right. That's right. And both we a have the means to pay our debt, mm -hmm. and and c there's no reason to shut the government down. In fact, what we should be doing is having the government assist our states and municipalities mm -hmm. who are in desperate need of money to make sure that we're building the roads. You know repairing the sewage systems, bringing the broadband to schools, mm -hmm. improving our infrastructure system on the road, on the sea, and in the air. I mean, these are not difficult things for people to comprehend. That's right, that's right. And yet we have a mindset in Washington that says, oh no, if that's spending any kind of money, we can't do it. It's not, it is requires you spending money, but it requires you to spend it by investing in the American people, by investing in the very commerce that will produce the jobs that that's we right. need. What have you found from since you've come back into the district? What has been the sounding board from small business leaders? What are they talking about? Um, in, 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 number in, of things. In, in, yeah, number wanting, one. The, wanting this federal government to help and in, yeah. in, in assist. Uh, first of all, consistency, because we haven't had a budget. We live from hand to mouth, and all these ideas that artificially contrive legislatively uh, uh, implemented sequester and mm -hmm. defaulting on the country's debt well, who needs to have that hanging over their head right. if you have a you know if you're an export state like Connecticut is and small business are saying geez our suppliers don't know whether or not the government's going to be open or whether or not we're going to default on our debts what kind of a message does this send so first so I they can't plan they can't plan and okay. the certainty that has to come from that so how about give them a budget you know, that's agreed on, and then come together and say, look, this is the infrastructure that we, that we need to develop. And from there, and ease up on the regulations and come back with tax reductions to make sense. There's broad-based agreement to lower the tax rate for everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I agree with the president that we ought to lower it further still to incentivize manufacturing okay. for all okay. the reasons we discussed before, because it's a four to one value added for every, every job that we create through manufacturing, we create four jobs in the service sector. Okay, okay. Um, what initiatives have you put forward in the Congress for the district that not only helps the district, but helps the state of Connecticut and the, and the country. And the country as, and, and well, as a of whole. course, the, uh, the, uh, my saying is keep the eagle flying. Uh, okay. We're a manufacturing-based company, but what we've been able to do with respect to the F-35, with respect to the tanker, with respect to Sikorsky, with respect to Electric Boat, uh, and most of the supply, now, even though Electric Boat is in New London, most of this supply base and the manufacturers and all those tool and die shops are in the first congressional district. Okay. And okay. so, first and foremost, to make sure that those contracts have been funded. Okay. Now they're funded, but when the government shuts down and you're under sequester, what happens is the Pentagon and the military say, well, we have to push those payments out, mm -hmm. and so we're, we're going to have to make do with what we have, and we're not going to bring on this new these new engines this this new technology mm -hmm. uh, so that is that has hurt us dramatically okay. but okay. beyond that also advocating for and that's why I had a Republican chairman up here working across the aisle 
Bill Schuster from Pennsylvania brought him up mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. and he's he said the same thing. You know, listen, you know, infrastructure isn't Democrat or Republican; it's American. That's it's right. about helping the country out. Mm -hmm. He said, "I'm all in favor of this, etc." For that, he's being primaried in Pennsylvania by a Tea Party candidate because he had the temerity to say, "Well, we ought to be funded." It doesn't matter whether it's John Larson's mm -hmm. district or Bill Schuster's district or anyone's across the country there are infrastructure needs that are going unmet in order to move the economy forward and have commerce flow we need to make these investments this is common sense this is not any this is not rocket science but he got challenged uh, by a tea party candidate because they said he's he's spending well yeah, he's spending money you're going to invest right. money but you're going to invest it and it's going to employ the nation do you know that the unemployment rate would drop by a third if it went from where we are now to around 8% to under 6%, wow. the, whole, the whole deficit would buy a third. So you, mm -hmm. if the goal is to deal with the national debt, okay. which it should be, and, it, and directed at this, you know, you drive down those costs by putting people back to work. Right. And not right. by further, you know, uh, curtailing the industry in a region, cutting back on, uh, you know, defense spending when we need it, Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And when it will employ people uh, in the private sector, that's right. That's uh, right. You know, these are these are these are, I think, uh, Paul, common sense solutions that we need to be working. And there, you know, sadly, there are people on the other side of the aisle who certainly want to work and see this happen, like the Bill Schusters, like the Peter Kings, mm -hmm. like most, frankly, a lot of the people in the Northeast. I think they get it. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not a question here of Republican versus Democrat. It's an ideology. Tea Party saying, no, you can't spend any money and we've got to just drive down the debt. It's their only myopic view mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. has to be done. That's important. I applaud them for the, de wanting to take a look at that. But this is a comprehensive picture. We didn't get here yesterday, That's right. you know, That's right. and so we've got to take the appropriate steps but chief amongst them should be putting the country back to work and creating the uh, an environment of stability, certainty, mm -hmm. and jobs. And that's what government can do by investing in the infrastructure. That put, That's not a handout. That's putting people back to work by building the country. And that's the investment you make. You make your investment in schools and education and roads and bridges and sewage systems, okay. deep harbors, airports, high-speed rail. You know, all things that are going to benefit commerce and the economy, and whether you're small or a big business. Now, you mentioned that you worked with the uh, congressman from Pennsylvania. Is, is, is there room to work within the, uh, yes. the, the, the Republican Party to get things done? Well, there is among some of them. Some of them. Okay. But what their problem is was best described by George Washington. What Washington said in this farewell address and what he was very concerned about, and imagine the infancy of the nation at the time. Now, Washington was well aware of political parties and, frankly, was leery of them. He thought that parties would have a tend to be factions. Okay. And, and that certainly existed in 1789 as, as well as it does today. He said, you know, there were the Federalists and the anti-federalists. There weren't Democrats and Republicans, but nonetheless. Mm -hmm. but what Washington worried about is what would happen that within a political party, within the government, you had a group that was at war with its own government. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, Paul, what we have today. Okay. However well-intended they think they are, um, being at war with your own government. Government is not the enemy here. <laughs> government, in fact, is the people. It's called we the people. That's right. In order to form a more perfect union. Well, We're still I, forming re it. <laughs> I respect the fact that people say, hey, look, you know, we need less government. You know, that's a debate. And that's something we always ought to look at. I always say we don't need big government or small government. We need efficient government. That's right. That's right. We need, peop we need things to operate efficiently and in the best possible manner that it can impact our, our citizenry. So, yeah, there are people in there on that side that want to work towards that goal, but they have a small faction. I say small, but it's about 45 to 90 at any given time members of the Republican conference mm -hmm. that would seek to 
you know, stop the nation from going forward. When they vote against relief, hurricane relief for the Northeast, and their own members from, you know, Republicans from New York and New Jersey stand up and said, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. Come on, we've just been hit by the most colossal storm ever. That's right, that's right. And we are always there for the South, for the Midwest, mm -hmm. and for the, you know, West Coast. And, but this was primarily from the South, but they said, no, uh, if this is gonna cost money and raise the debt, Right, well, and then Chris Christie famously, and rightfully so, mm -hmm. blasted them. He said, you know, this that, that is a natural disaster. And again, the natural disaster, Hurricane Sandy wasn't Democrat or Republican. Right. And it impacted right. all these people. Mm -hmm. But if you adhere to an ideological belief and that's all you can see, and you can't see the forest from the trees, but you just cling myopically to that belief, then it's hard to um, get things done. Get things uh, done. And uh, that's... Very frustrating right now in Washington, but I, I, I hope that they've learned the lessons because of the anger of the public over the way that the shutdown took place and nearly defaulted on the uh, full faith and credit of the United States government. 144 members voted to both keep the shutdown and default on the country's full faith and credit. That is amazing for me to believe. Their own leadership said, no, this is the wrong way to go. I'm hopeful because they have said, we're not traveling down this path again. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they, there are, you know, a, um, a very strong-willed and vocal minority. Um, the public probably knows most from hearing from Ted Cruz and others like that. Okay. But there's a very vocal minority in the House as well. And uh, I know that Speaker Boehner has a big task in front of him, but I think He's got to let these issues come to the Congress and let the Congress work its will. Okay. Let there be a vote. That's right. That's let right. there be a vote on immigration. Let there be a vote on the president's jobs bill. Let there be a, full, a, a, a vote on background checks on, on guns. I mean, how many more uh, of these tragedies do we have to have as we approach the one-year anniversary of Newtown? I That's mean, right. uh, why not have a vote? I mean... Aren't citizens entitled to see where their elected representatives stand on the issue of jobs, immigration, and universal background checks on whether or not someone is mentally unstable or a criminal and preventing them from getting a gun? I mean, these to me, don't right. these are common sense issues that there ought to be an up or down vote on. Up or down vote. Very good. Well, once again, lots of stuff to talk about. And we've come to an end for this particular segment of Grassroots Business Journal. My guest today has been Congressman John Larson from the 1st District. Again, if you have any questions and comments about this or other previous shows, please contact me at 860-490-8856. And until next time, let's keep talking business. Thank you, Congressman. Thanks, Paul.